That 16 year old spent about 10 minutes in court today. He learned that he will not be going anywhere soon. We're learning more about that incident and happened at the house right behind me. In this West Palm Beach neighborhood, it was a peaceful Sunday afternoon, but not for long. The kids out here having an Easter egg hunt. Next thing we know, we see a boy in a red and white shirt shooting. He stopped right there. He ran up some more. He shot again. We trying to get the kids in the house and trying to call 911 at the same time. Verlin Foster is the teenager's father. He says he got into an argument with his son after his son was yelling at his sister. He went on and on and on and on about how much he hated everybody and this and that. I told him, just man, just, just get your clothes and get out. Foster says his son walked outside and erupted. He didn't shoot at us, but he started shooting. No one was injured, but there was plenty of bullet holes left in the home. When police arrived, they took the teenager into custody. Investigators say the 38 caliber handgun they seized was stolen out of Broward County during a car burglary a few years ago. State your name for the record, please, sir. The boy was in juvenile court Monday afternoon. In your case, they're considering filing it as an adult charge. He will be held at the Juvenile Assessment Center for up to 21 days. Foster says his son just shut down after his mother lost her fight with cancer. She died a year and a half ago. And he's been cutting up every cent. You think jail is the only solution for him? Yeah. Yeah, man. I hate to say that. Somebody gonna kill him. Or he either gonna kill somebody. A handful of people who live in the neighborhood agree. They need to shot some as an adult because you're doing adult crime. And it's unclear how that 16 year old got that gun from that car burglary from two years ago. The state state attorney's office has up to 21 days to decide whether or not to charge him as an adult for this crime. We're live at West Palm Beach. Ted White, WPBF 25 News. Ted, thank you. Investigators tell us someone deliberately set a house on fire in West Palm Beach this morning and now police are looking for the person responsible. The fire was ruled an arson. Sonica Dange has the new details. As you can see, tape is still surrounding this home on 22nd Street in West Palm Beach. Officers arrived here just after 5 o'clock this morning in reference to a disturbance. Once they arrived, that's when they saw that this house was on fire. Through their investigations, they learned that this house may have been abandoned, although there were some squatters who were inside. They had determined that this was a case of arson. No one was injured, but they are still looking for witnesses. In West Palm Beach, Sonica Dange, WPBF 25 News. Police have a suspect in custody in a murder case that dates back to June. Gregorio Corrales is the man who pulled, who police say pulled the trigger. Over the summer, police received a 911 call to South 57th Avenue in Green Acres. They say a confrontation ended in gunfire, and when officers arrived, they found Gabriel Aguilar dead. Tonight, Cuban dictator Fidel Castro is out with a sharp response to President Obama's historic visit to the island nation. In a letter, Castro says, quote, we don't need the empire to give us any presidents, any presence. The president was in Cuba last week. Anchor Todd McDermott is here now with more on what was in Castro's letter. Todd? Well, the 1,500-word letter, really an essay, is Castro's personal response to Obama's three-day visit. He didn't exactly thank President Obama for stopping by either. That letter titled Brother Obama was published by Cuban State Media. In it, the 89-year-old Fidel Castro recounts the history of U.S. aggression against Cuba. Castro's letter opens with descriptions of environmental abuse under the Spaniards and reviews the historical roles of Cuban independence heroes Jose Marti, Antonio Maceo, and Maximo Gomez. Uh, Castro then goes over crucial sections of President Obama's speech line by line. Uh, during his trip, the president was critical of Cuba's lack of basic human rights and lack of democracy. The president did not meet with Fidel Castro who's long retired and in frail health, but Mr. Obama did meet and did appear with Fidel's younger brother, the current Cuban President Raul Castro. In the letter, Fidel Castro also writes about Obama saying, quoting again, my modest suggestion is that he reflects and doesn't try to develop theories about Cuban politics. President Obama was the first sitting U.S. president to visit Cuba in nearly 90 years. Felicia. Todd, thank you. Well, it wasn't an ordinary day on the job for some window washers today. Take a look, a power outage caused these folks to get stuck on the side of a building in Houston, Texas. They were about 20 floors above ground when their basket lost power. The two workers were stuck there for more than an hour. Firefighters were finally able to lower a ladder from a window to the basket so those workers could climb out.
Those I'll firefighters would have to come get me because yes. I'm not moving. Passed out. Well, a local school district is working to clean up mold found in a classroom. Up next, the elementary school where the problem was found and the number of complaints the schools received. And if you received these sweet treats for Easter, you're going to want to return them. What's wrong with these chocolates sold at Trader Joe's? Tiffany, Felicia, we're now tracking strong thunderstorms developing here in Palm Beach County, just west of Wellington, moving over the acreage, some heavy rain, notice the little white dots, the lightning. So here we go, Palm Beach County, stand by, the storms moving your way. We'll update the radar, talk about a stormy Tuesday as well when we're back with your full forecasts in a couple minutes. School officials in Indian River County are working to clean up mold that was found inside Felsmere Elementary School. The school received numerous complaints. John Zanitas went to Felsmere and learned the complaints started years ago. Records show that teachers here at Felsmere Elementary School have been requesting testing for mold, saying that they've been feeling sick and so have their students. The controversy was sparked by a small local newspaper that alleged mold problems were endangering students at Felsmere Elementary School and hinted at a cover up. So we reached out to the Indian River County School District and obtained all recent records of teachers complaining about mold. Two years ago, teachers at Felsmere Elementary School started asking the school district to test for mold. One teacher claiming her asthma symptoms flared up in class and her students with allergies were constantly ill. Last September, a teacher wanted her building checked for mold because parents were complaining their children were coming home sick from school. Last month, maintenance workers found an excessive amount of mold behind a classroom's whiteboard and had a contractor clean it up. A surprise inspection by the health department found several ventilation fans weren't working at the school and needed to be fixed. But inspectors did not find any major mold issues. In a statement to WPBF 25 News, the Indian River County School District said, quote, complaints of mold are taken seriously and investigated thoroughly by our facility staff. Keeping our schools and buildings safe is an ongoing process that is monitored continuously. Reporting in Felsmere, John Zanitas, WPBF 25 News. Brazen thefts playing out across Florida and the nation. Coming up, what the thieves were after in two cases and the new surveillance video showing them in action. You're watching WPBF 25 News. We continue to follow breaking news. The all clear was just issued at Miami International Airport after Terminal H was evacuated because of an unattended bag. Everybody was moved outside, but again, the all clear was just issued at the airport. Well, this sounds like something out of a movie. Ten thieves, one car dealership, and quite the escape after stealing cars. This all happened in Florida, but these brazen heists are happening all over the country. And police in California are now searching for two suspects who broke into a check hashing business and then crashed a car into a nearby gun store. Watch these 10 young thieves swarm a Tampa, Florida car dealership while one runs inside. Surveillance cameras rolling as police say he takes the lockbox containing keys and hands them out. The crooks then drive off the lot with eight vehicles early Friday morning. The entire heist taking just two minutes. This is a daily event across the country. Two days later, another group of thieves rammed a truck through this Ventura, California gun store. Surveillance video shows them smashing the glass cases and running off with with loads of handguns and rifles before the owner arrived. I had two of my cousins come out with me. We were armed and ready for anything that could have happened after the robbery. It's a big concern for us at this point. Anytime guns get in the wrong hands. Earlier this month, a similar burglary in Houston. The door to this gun store ripped off by a pickup truck. Police say 10 men then ransacked the place, taking assault rifles, shotguns, and handguns in and out in one minute, 11 seconds. Three of the accused suspects are now behind bars. The likelihood that they'll get caught is fairly high because they are so unsophisticated and sloppy. Police in Tampa have already located two of the vehicles stolen Friday and are now testing for any forensic evidence left behind. Investigators believe that same group of car thieves could be tied to a multi-car burglary in Orlando. They recommend dealerships use alarms and lock the keys away in a safe. Brandy hit ABC News, Los Angeles.
And now your WPBF 25 first alert traffic. You're looking live at Okeechobee Boulevard and Interstate 95 in West Palm Beach. Traffic looks like it's slow going on, on one side. I think that's southbound right there. Uh, you can get your first alert traffic updates anytime by going to WPBF.com. Well, we are just a few days away from the fourth annual WPBF 25 Health and Wellness Festival featuring Dr. Oz, plus his special guest, health advocate and beloved entertainer, Suzanne Summers. Now, the free event features the area's most sought after medical professionals, healthy cooking demonstrations from Lisa Oz, food samples, prize giveaways, and fun activities for the whole family. The WPBF 25 News Team will be there this Saturday from 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon at the Gardens Mall in Palm Beach Gardens. We hope you're going to come out and say hi to us. Big day. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to It's always to so much fun. And it's a blast. Such a big turnout. Yep. So nice. Get there early, though, right? Yes. <laughs> Suzanne Summers, Dr. Oz, Mrs. Oz. I mean, that's so good. much to see. Tiffany and Felicia. I mean, and Mike Lyons. That's, yeah. that's why I'm showing up, just because <laughs> yeah. these two are right here. You get a dose of us every day. And I love it. It's great to have you back, by the way. Thank you. Good to be back. Came back on a stormy day. Mm -hmm. Port St. Lucie getting hammered right now with some heavy rain. Indian River County as well. And here in Palm Beach County, just starting to mm -hmm. pop. So here we go. First alert Doppler radar coming up in a second. Let's show you the sky cam. You're looking at our Jupiter Beach Resort. It's all quiet in Jupiter. Remember the other day when we had five inches plus in Jupiter? At this hour, it's all good. But let's take you to the Treasure Coast. That's where the action is now. First alert Doppler radar tracking two areas of concern. One in Indian River County, the second right around Port St. Lucie. And as we've been saying throughout the afternoon, as we've been interrupting your favorite show to tell you about the storms, heavy rain, gusty winds up to about 60 miles per hour, tons of lightning and even the potential for some hail. So let's take it one at a time. Vero Beach, here we go. This is round two for you. You had those strong thunderstorms move through around 3, 3.30 this afternoon. Strong storms now moving past I-95. They are moving quick at around 20 to 25 miles per hour, but they keep redeveloping to the west and moving from the west back toward the east. Here we are in Port St. Lucie. Gusty winds, maybe as high as 50 miles per hour. Torrential downpours in Port St. Lucie. Indian River Estates earlier, Chris and I looking at the radar, noticed some rotation with the storm that swept offshore about 45 minutes ago. Palm Beach County, it's been quiet, but now a few storms are starting to pop, especially around the acreage. And like the storms up north, these storms have the potential to turn severe as well. Here we are in the acreage, Royal Palm Beach. The thunderstorms continue tracking from the west to the east, and we'll be watching the radar closely as we continue through the evening hours. Stormy, to say the least. At least we had a decent weekend, but now the storms are back, continuing perhaps across the Treasure Coast and Palm Beach County till 8 30, 9 o'clock tonight. Then we get a break. The overnight hours look good, warm, humid. I mean, it feels like summertime. Miami uh, hit a record today of 91 degrees. Look at the storms developing out west again tomorrow afternoon. So another stormy day on Tuesday. By Wednesday, we will turn off the storms. It gets a little drier for Wednesday and Thursday. Meanwhile, heat goes on upper 60s and low 70s and temperatures tomorrow. I know you're wondering, what happened to spring? We went right from winter to summer. That pattern continues as well. So forecast for tonight, showers and storms, some heavy.